TNA Wrestling and Direct Auto Insurance present Destination X. Tonight, live from Orlando, Florida, TNA puts the X Division in the spotlight. A new champion will be crowned in the high risk, high wire spectacle known as Ultimate X. And Austin Aries challenges Bobby Roode for the World Heavyweight Championship. It is Mike today. It is JB, Jeremy Borash in for Taz. Welcome you to Destination X, where tonight, JB, it is going to be Kurt Angle facing Samoa Joe in the Bound for Glory series. It's going to be AJ Styles against Christopher Daniels, last man standing, and Bobby Roode to defend the World Heavyweight title against the challenge of Austin Aries. Mike, it's hard to believe it was just a year ago that we were here at Destination X congratulating Austin Aries on winning a TNA contract. Fast forward one year, Destination X, He's in the main event competing for the World Heavyweight Championship. And then tonight, hanging above the ring, the X Division Championship to be determined in the Ultimate X match. But in order to get there, first you have to qualify in the tournament. And this last Thursday night, Dixie Carter was so impressed that we are going to have a last chance qualifying match with the four that did not qualify. And that kicks off Destination X. Here we go. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, this is Rubik! Just like Dixie Carter, we were so impressed with Rubik's, even though he was defeated by Sanjay Dutt on Impact Wrestling back on June the 28th. He is the first of the four competitors that will go to battle in the last chance qualifier. And his opponent from Big Bear, California, Mason Andrews! I think we can say the same for Mason Andrews. His match against Rashad Cameron, so impressed with the aerial ability of this young man from Big Bear, California. Certainly is, Mike, and he's looking to take advantage of that opportunity given to him in this matchup. And from San Diego, California, we saw the kamikaze lucha style employed by Lars Ole this past Thursday in a match against Kenny King. This is another opportunity for Lars Ole to move into the X Division title tournament later tonight. And from Minneapolis, Minnesota, it's Dakota Darso! And Mike, certainly after what we saw this last Thursday night and the previous Thursday before that, all four of these gentlemen came up a little short, but were very impressive nonetheless. After what we saw this last Thursday, I agree with Dixie Carter. Give these four another shot. Let's see who emerges. Let's see who comes out on top. And then let's see who advances in this tournament. Dakota Darso coming up just short against Flip Casanova Thursday night. And the second generation competitor gets sent out to the arena floor. It is first pin or first submission to gain the victory in the four-way and action. Well, just like the X Division, it's already underway, already high risk and high flying bodies all over the impact zone. Well, that's what the X Division is all about. And off the bat, right away, a combination of any combinations. Obviously, these individuals need to look at this as a marathon and not a sprint, because after this, there's something more. And after that, there's Ultimate X. Mason Andrews sent out to the floor by Rubix. Quickly from behind, it's Lars Only who gets caught with the back elbow, the mass band. It will slide through on Only, and then it's Lars Only snapping off the head scissors. And imagine what it must have been like for these four to get the phone call Thursday night that they're getting another opportunity. And certainly after these four put forth the effort they did, they have to look at this as truly a last chance opportunity. It's Lars Ole and Dakota Darso. Dakota, the second generation wrestler, we told you on Thursday night, the son of Barry Darso, probably most famous for being one half of the Demolition Tag Team as Demolition Smash and 
Lars only just got smashed by Dakota Darso, who goes flying across the ring and elbows Rubik's down to the floor. And regardless of experience, that has to be an advantage. He has been around this industry his entire life with his father. Uh, and obviously gives him a perspective that the other three don't have. And he's going to go for the cover right here. Darso on top for two. He told us that he is bred to be a champion. He needs a win in this last chance qualifier number one. Then he moves into the tournament. Then he needs a win in that tournament match. And then he advances tonight to Ultimate X, where we will crown a new X Division champion. Quick roll up out of the corner. Only gets only two. Keep your eye on Rubik's from the top row. Wow. Cross body leads to a cover and a near fall. And Rubik's so impressive with his matchup. Two weeks ago with Sanjay Dunn. Very happy to see him involved in getting another cover. Oh. Still too soon. Quickly cut off by Darso. Gonna try and take him up into the air and does. Powers him straight down. Here's the pin attempt by Darso. And only in to break it up before three. Smart strategy on the part of Only because he stays alive like everybody else in this match since it's first pin or first submission. You have to be, you have to stay alive. You have to be very cognizant of what your opponents are doing at all times during this match. Any pinfall means you're out. Eyes in the back of your head, right? No question about it, Mike. Dakota Darso taken out, as well as Lars Oley, who supplied the blow. And now Rubik's attention is turned to Mason Andrews. Oh! We told you we were impressed with the aerial ability of Mason Andrews, and that was exhibit one right there. What great elevation. Over the top rope. Oh, look out. Here comes Rubik's. Mass man set to fly. Oh, my! Great response from the crowd here in Orlando at Destination X for this four-way opening match. The last chance qualifier. Andrews rolled back in. Rubik senses now that he might be able to put Andrews away. Oh, instead, it's Andrews gonna go submission. Has the arm bar applied. Submission hold here. Rubik's trying to fight through. And there looking on is Kid Cash. The reason being that the winner of this match, this last chance bout, will be put to the test because he must immediately meet his tournament opponent, Kid Cash. It's going to be no downtime, no rest period. Well, you talk about it being a marathon and not a sprint, knowing that even if you do survive this match, Kid Cash hangs in the balance, waits for you. And of course, after that, you're going to have to go right into this matchup with Kid Cash. Great move. By Lars only, all three men affected by that. Only can attempt on Rubik's. Now turns his attention over to Andrews and gets two on him. Thus far in this matchup, all four equally impressive in different ways, but you can't really pinpoint at anyone with the advantage at this point. Anyone's match to win. Lars only an attempt here to neutralize and to ground Mason Andrews. Meanwhile, you leave yourself wide open to the shot from behind by Dakota Darso. Smart strategy right there. Take the opposition, send them out to the floor, narrow the field down, and then try and concentrate and focus on that one individual that you can either gain the submission or the pin. Only headed to the top. High risk attempt cut off by Dakota Darso. Wow. Powerful strikes with the kicks from Andrews, who heads up to the corner. 
Looked like he was good. An attempt here to overpower only. Instead, Dakota Darso slips underneath. Oh, and power bombs both men into the pin. It's Darso on Andrews for two. Look Watch Rubik's. Wow. All the way across the ring, Mike. Coast to coast drop kick. Seems like the crowd at the Impact Zone tonight has picked out Rubik's as their favorite in this match. And you know, even in defeat against Sanjay Dunn on Impact, he still went over the crowd. Look at this. Oh, my. All the way, springboard from across the other side of the ring and connects. Doubly effective move. Not just the impact from the dropkick, but at the same time, Darso, the back of his head, crashing into the corner turnbuckle. All four men right now. Looking to capitalize on the situation. Who is going to emerge with the advantage at this stage of the matchup? Look out. Andrews tried to take Darso up to his shoulders. Quickly countered him. A neck breaker applied by Darso. Andrews taken down, but then Dakota turns right around, drilled by the Rubik's kick. Ooh! Wow. Hit scissors straight down, face plant style by Lars only. And he looked to get Rubik's back in the ring for a possible pin, and Rubik's slipping right out, realizing that after that move, he needed to get out regain his composure and not be pinned. Only squaring off with Andrews. Mason Andrews had only up on his shoulders, but he was able to escape, and then the high jumping knee to the head. Andrews takes him up, powers him straight down. Cutter style, pin, leg hook. Whoa, got it. Your winner, Mason. Mike, it's all about opportunity. We talked about one year ago at this very pay-per-view when Austin Aries emerged for the contract. He can look back at this night and realize it was a pivotal moment in his career. Will it be the same for Mason Andrews? His first, his first hurdle is over with. However, his second hurdle awaits in the form of Kit Cash. Nicely done. What a way to kick off Destination X with the four-way. The last chance qualifier. You talked about opportunity. You talked about chance, JB. Mason Andrews cashes in for Mason Andrews. That is step number one towards his goal of becoming X Division champ. We said it earlier. There would be no rest period. There would be no downtime. This is the opening match in the X Division title tournament. It's Kid Cash former X Division champion against Mason Andrews. And if there is somebody in the X Division that I would not want to be in this predicament against, it's Kid Cash, the opportunist, the man who takes every single possible shortcut he can in attempts at victory. He knows what's at stake here, Mike. He knows what he has to do. And obviously, after Mason Andrews competed in a, in a tough four-way matchup and emerged victorious, now he's in a predicament where he has to face the fresh Kid Cash. Huge edge for Cash, and we talk about a nonchalant cover. That's the ultimate in those type of pin attempts as Andrews able to get the shoulder up before three. You know, very few X Division wrestlers evoke the, the negative emotions from our fan base like Kid Cash does, and well, you can hate him, but you gotta respect him. Cash on top for two. I'll tell you what, Mike, out on the road, anytime Kid Cash comes to town, we've got some guys at the security. They travel with us everywhere. They know that they have to be around ringside, not to protect Kid Cash, but to protect the fans from what he might do. He loses it at the drop of a hat. Short temper. And a guy who is not afraid to take advantage of any opportunity. He has not let up for one moment on Mason Andrews since he came out here tonight. This is the chance for Kid Cash to regain the X Division title. Andrews, great leg extension. A pair of drop kicks back to back on Cash. But then the quick reversal sends Andrews off into the ropes. Gonna go crucifix style. Cash drop down. His shoulders on the mat for just two. Andrews taken up and dropped across the top steel cable by Cash. And Cash not only wrestles professionally, also competes in the world of MMA. So when you look at the styles of these two men, I think maybe more aerial tactics for Mason Andrews, but he certainly has an MMA style as well. 
Well, you can just see the redness across Mason Andrews from those devastating chops. And Kid Cash is just relentless, just absolutely relentless when it comes to dishing out the offense and taking advantage of those opportunities. Has always been that way since the very early days of this organization. You talk about how people have evolved over the last 10 years. Kid Cash really has only gotten meaner with age. And meaner in the form of a series of vicious and violent cross-face shots to the head of Andrews. Again, trying to intimidate the referee. That's always in the game plan of Kid Cash. Right in the face of Brian Hebner. Power move. Elevated over. Straight down to the canvas. And Cash gets two. And Mike, think about this. Winner of this match goes on to compete later on tonight in the Ultimate X match. And you have to think fatigue is going to play a factor throughout the course of the evening as we see who qualifies for the Ultimate X match later tonight. Look at this. First the backbreaker across the knee, then off the middle rope, straight down, double sledge into the pin, and again a near fall. You're right, this is X Division title tournament match number one. First of four as we will determine which four competitors move on later tonight in Ultimate X when we will crown a new X Division champion. Usual lack of respect that you would expect from Cash. And you're starting to sense some frustration on the part of the veteran. Kid Cash, huge, huge experience edge in this match. Also combined with the fact that Mason Andrews just competed for probably, what would you say, 10, 11 minutes out here in that opening four-way match? No question about Ooh. it. The road to success is not an easy one, especially for those involved in the Ultimate X Tournament tonight, as we are going to qualify four different X Division stars. Well, there we go. Typical Kid Cash. Drop down, elbow leads to a cover, but still life in Mason Andrews. Boy, Cash doing everything within his power to try to close the deal, to try to move on to Ultimate X. Wow, look at that. Reaching through with the key lock is Kid Cash. Referee Hebner checking to see if Andrews is going to submit. Power of the key lock as well as the body weight of Kid Cash comes into play with the submission hold. Important for Andrews to get back up to his feet. He does. The opening's there for the series of rights. But then the opening is immediately cut off by Cash again. And I asked Austin Aries earlier tonight who he thought would emerge victorious in this tournament. He had Obviously, a lot of pr uh, pride in the X Division Championship, which he oh, is a four. Wow, just to the floor. He really said it's anyone's game. Obviously, his concern now is the World Heavyweight Championship, but, you know, really setting a precedent for future X Division opportunities down the road by allowing the X Division Championship, by setting a precedent for the X Division Champion to get a shot at that World Heavyweight Championship every year. Aries has been so supportive of the X Division. Talking about, well, adding prestige, making it his legacy that that X Division champ gets the opportunity to fight for the World Heavyweight title every year at Destination X. Cash to the corner. Look at that. Oh! Andrews, last split second, able to get the knees up. Andrews digging down deep at this point. While Cash has been in control for the majority of the match. Andrews got back up to his feet, but then immediately the recipient of the offense from Cash. Ooh. Jumping back elbow, followed by the running clothesline. Again the drop kick. First time Andrew's really been able to put together a series of moves. Out of the corner. Wow. 
He needs to capitalize on this momentum, Mike. It has been kid cash for most of this match, and right now Mason Andrews looks to be back he in control. Eyes on Andrews. Drop kick off the top. Caught cash. Pin two. No. Grazed him on that top rope missile drop kick. Did not hit it flush. Oh, ho, ho. Wow. that time he hit it flush. High jumping. Oh, no, not enough. How close was that, Mike? He connected from. Halfway across the ring with that running knee right to the face of Kid Cash. It's a dazed Cash who shot off into the ropes. Able to follow through. Sunset flip, but Andrews rolls through. Andrews, pin, bridge. Great strength on the part of Cash. That's so impressive. Backslide. Andrews shoulders down for just a split second before he rolls through. Then gets drilled with the knee. Cash went for that double underhook. Quickly reversed. Cash's shoulders down, and Andrews just pinned him. Your winner, Mason Andrews. And how about that? Mason Andrews, not only victorious in the last chance qualifier, but then immediately in the heat of the battle, no downtime, no rest period, he defeats Kid Cash. And as a result, Mason Andrews, the first of the four competitors to qualify for Ultimate X. A hard fought battle by Mason Andrews. And obviously after already getting through his other three opponents, Kid Cash took it to Mason Andrews from the get go. From the top we see the knees connect, changing momentum. And then look at that from all the way across the room, Mason Andrews connects with a huge knee. And that was the game changer, but Kid Cash had a little bit left in him. Mason Andrews able to surprise him with a roll up and get the win. You talk about opportunity, Mike. That is the word of the night. Mason Andrews, that man will now go on to the ultimate X match later tonight here at Destination X. What a win. We're going to send it to the back where Christy Hemi is standing by with the Samoan submission machine. I'm backstage with Samoa Joe. Now we've been taking your predictions all night on Twitter on who's gonna win the Austin Aries Bobby Roode match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Samoa Joe, what is your prediction? Well, on a night when nothing but the greatest will do, well, I'll go with a man who's achieved something great, a man who's beaten me. So tonight, I pick Austin Aries. Good choice. Now, you're in a big match yourself, Bound for Glory Series match. Let's go ahead and take a good look at the leaderboard. Topping the list, James Storm with 36 points, and just behind him, Samoa Joe with 27 points. And your opponent tonight in fourth place with 20 points. Now, Joe, what is your strategy going into tonight? My strategy tonight. You see, it's pretty simple. One year ago, when I got into the Bound for Glory series, my strategy was to hurt, kill, and maim everyone involved in this endeavor. But this year, it's different. This year, let's just say I've seen the light. I see the opportunity. I see the road paved to my heavyweight championship through the Bound for Glory series. And that leaves you, Kurt. What do you represent? Well, tonight, you're not a gold medalist. You're 10 points. Tonight, you are not an indestructible wrestling machine. You are the man who I will make tap out. You are an ends to a means. And I will beat you, Kurt, by any means necessary. Samoa Joe with the selection of Austin Aries. And just like Samoa Joe, everybody has their opinion. And we want to hear what your prediction is on Austin Aries, Bobby Roode for the World Heavyweight Championship later tonight. Vote now via Twitter. JB, tell them how they can be heard. All right, we want to know who you think is going to merge World Heavyweight Champion tonight. Will Bobby Roode keep the World Heavyweight Championship or will it be Austin Aries night tonight. At Impact Wrestling is our Twitter address. Now, what we want you to do is, of course, include your hashtag at DestinationX with the hashtag in front of it, and we want to know what you think. Who will emerge victorious tonight? As you see the feedback coming in, fans from all over the world chiming in on this. It's going to be a huge matchup tonight. Leave us your feedback. At Impact Wrestling is our Twitter name. And we're going to be checking out your feedback all night long tonight.
The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, representing the United Kingdom, Douglas Williams. Time for our second X Division title tournament matchup. Douglas Williams headed to the ring. Former two-time X Division champion looking to regain the gold. He's also held the TV title, one half of the World Tag Team titles. His chance to get back into the title picture. Moving to Ultimate X is now. And his opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, Kenny King! You want to talk about a guy who has really stepped up in the last week. No question about it, Kenny King has made it known the world over that he is here to crown a new king in Impact Wrestling, and he says it starts tonight. Kenny King has to get through Douglas Williams to even get a shot to compete in the Ultimate X match. You talk about a guy with so much confidence. I've known both these men for a long time, and I gotta tell you, Mike, eight years ago at a small little promotion called NWA Wildside in Cornelia, Georgia, I met Kenny King for the first time. A quiet guy. Didn't really seem to stand out from the crowd. Fast forward eight years to this last Thursday night, I see Kenny for the first time. I find out he's, well, he certainly had an interesting career choice, interesting career path along the way, and is beaming with confidence. A completely different man. He has evolved over the last eight years to a man who has now found himself competing with among the best in the world. Douglas Williams tonight for a shot to compete in the Ultimate X later on at Destination X. What did we say about Kenny King on Thursday night on Impact? A real-life Magic Mike. A real-life Magic Mike competes with, or competes, I, I guess, what they do? They, well, <laughs> sure, they compete on some level. Form of competition, yeah, I guess. Sure, in the Chippendales in Las Vegas. So this guy has quite a life, I gotta tell you. Kenny King with the victory over Lars only on Thursday night to qualify for the title tournament with Mason Andrews, the first to advance. It's time to find out who the second competitor for the Ultimate X match is going to be. And there you see it hanging high above the ring. The X Division title belt that will go to the victor tonight in Ultimate X. Some great back and forth. I can tell you what, the, the, the path that Douglas Williams has taken through his career, very interesting. I was in England this last weekend and saw something called World of Sports, and that's what Doug Williams watched growing up, learning this trade. Boy, that, that is old school professional wrestling from the UK. Well, I saw it for the first time this last week when I was over there, and I'll tell you what, you can see the influence in his style. It's so unique, Mike, and as we watch different people growing up, this is the type of style that Douglas Williams knows in and out and is as good at and it is anyone today that is keeping it alive, that, that European style. King drops down into the pin for two. Now the backslide attempt with William's shoulders down. Did you tell me you were really impressed with Johnny Saint? Little, little, little rollerball Rocco. Oh, some great names. And obviously, you know, we grew up watching different people. I, I grew up watching the Crusher, Mad Dog, Vashon. Might explain a few things about me. <laughs> but Douglas Williams grew up with a very, I guess, proper British style. Uh, painful submissions, chain wrestling, and he has incorporated that into his genre, into his arsenal. Whereas Kenny King, I'll tell you what, to see how he has advanced, to see how far he has come in eight years, just amazing, and look at that. Huh, what a British gentleman is Doug Williams, offering the hand and then offering the foot. Yeah, the cheap shot by Williams on Kenny King. Different offenses here from the two. More mat-based offense, more striking from Williams, more athletic style from King, who sent out to the floor. There's the quickness of Kenny King. Oh my, slingshot, twisting in mid-air and landing on Williams. Let's take a look at that again, Mike. Kenny King twisting over that momentum was fantastic, and obviously Doug Williams didn't even see it coming. Yeah, just the superior quickness on the part of King. Snaps off the suplex, then rolls straight in to the mount, reigns in the right hands to the side of the head. 
You talked about the difference in Kenny King. I saw him first yeah, here in TNA, 2005, 2006. He has made incredible strides in the last five, six years. Big experience edge for the 19-year pro Douglas Williams. Off the leapfrog, drop down, to hold a five. Quick float over by Kenny King, and now it's Kenny King's chance to do a little mat wrestling against Douglas Williams. You know, it's not really the strategy I think Kenny King wants to. Look at that. Doug Williams just stands in the back of his knee and takes down. That's that's the kind of momentum switch that type of offense can provide. Literally, by stepping on his knee, on the back of the knee, he was able to turn the tide completely and regain the momentum. If you are Kenny King, you want to make sure that you do not fall prey to the chaos theory suplex that has gained Williams so many wins. Once Douglas Williams gets you in that waistline, once he gets you rolling into that bridging German suplex, it is almost impossible to defend against. Victim after victim for Douglas Williams, one of the most sought after competitors anywhere in the world. Literally, sometimes he leaves Impact and goes straight back to the United Kingdom. He'll go to Germany, work three nights in a row, come back again and compete here in America. Really, a worldwide superstar is Douglas Williams. Off the series of rights, Williams fired into the corner. King goes to follow up, but got drilled by the elbow, and then the European uppercut appropriately out of the corner by Williams. Powerful clothesline. To someone like Douglas Williams, as much as he has accomplished, we told you about all the title reigns, multi-time X Division champ, TV champ, half of the world tag team champions. You do not want to be shown up here by Kenny King. You don't want to be used as a stepping stone by Kenny King. This is Williams' chance, as well as King's, to move to Ultimate X. No question about it, Mike, and we mentioned it before. Obviously, Mason Andrews competing already for a, a number of minutes, and he ha now has a, a little bit of an advantage as he has the most time in between from the time of his win to the Ultimate X match, but at the same time, he has to be completely drained after getting full. Oh, watch this quick roll up out of the corner. Came out of nowhere. Williams shoulders down for two as King almost moved to Ultimate X. And a thrust to the midsection followed up by an uppercut. That, that is... Is very typical of Doug Williams, a combination like that. Take it out of your, your midsection and then take it out of your face, essentially. That's how he's won so many matches in the two decades that he has competed. Powerful strikes, great mat work, and then catch you out of nowhere with the suplex. Running knee in the corner. This time, straight vertical. Snaps it off out of the corner, but maintains his grip. There's the goal behind. Here it comes. Ooh, went for it. He knew it. Did he can't have that scouted. King answers. First atomic drop, then ends a Geary style kick to the back of the head. King and Williams down, referee putting in the count. This time it's the power of Kenny King. Back-to-back -back clotheslines and as Williams goes to the ropes, the spin kick was on the money. Stack him up for just two. This time, a spine buster after the kick leads to another cover, another pin attempt, and yet another two count. King is showing he has versatile feet. He's hitting Williams from all directions with a variety of kicks now. Has Doug Williams in the corner, comes in again. Veteran Williams, one step ahead. First the Buddha, then avoids the contact in the corner. Quickly to the opposite side. And Kenny King gonna try and go up and meet him. Dangerous fall for Kenny King, who crashes on the floor. Well, speaking about danger and high risk, here comes Williams, that time with the knee off the top. 
And Williams taking a page out of Kenny King's arsenal, taking it to the sky and delivering a knee. Good point. You don't often see Douglas Williams go that high risk. But the fact is he can, Mike, and that's what separates him from a lot of others. He really has a style that can accommodate a, a game plan of submission, or if you got to take it to the skies, Doug Williams just showed he can do it as well. Looking for the count out win is, is Williams. Instead, King rolls back in to beat the count, but Williams comes up just short on the pin. Exchange between the two. King first the elbow, snaps the head and neck of Williams across the top. Gonna go spring bar. Powerful move, snapping the neck. King drapes the arm. King right back to the offense. Takes Williams up to his shoulders, but Williams able to drop down, roll through. Too close to the ropes for the pin attempt. Ring awareness on the part of King as he's able to get the rope break. Effective. Another running high knee by Williams. Kenny King leapfrogs over the top of Williams, quickly takes him up. Got him up on his shoulders. Oh, wow, that's it. Powers him straight down. Here we go. Leg hook, pin. Got it. Your winner, Kenny King. I'll tell you what, when Kenny King hit that move this last Thursday on Impact, it was lights out. And for the second time in a row, that same maneuver is used to gain a victory, this time over Douglas Williams. Let's take a look at how he did it. Kenny King has Williams up over his head and drops him right down, enables him to get the cover and advance to the Ultimate X match later tonight here at Destination X. The victorious Kenny King joins Mason Andrews. JB said it, they're headed to Ultimate X as we will have a new X Division champion later tonight. We send it to the back and our broadcast colleague, Christy Hemi. Take it, Christy. We're backstage at Destination X, and as you've just seen, half of the field has qualified for the Ultimate X Championship match tonight. But right now, we're gonna talk to Christopher Daniels. Christopher Daniels, one year in the making, last man standing match, AJ Styles. What's going on there? Christy, you know a lot can happen in a year. A year ago, all I was to AJ Styles was his support system, his lackey. And a year ago, it was more important to me to be a friend than to be a winner. Well, I lost that mentality. And ever since that year, I've done nothing but win and dominate. I am one half of the world tag team champions of the world, not redundant. And I am the new face of Impact Wrestling. And now, like you said, last man standing, well, when you're in a match where it doesn't matter about pinfalls, all that matters is that you beat your opponent senseless. You look in the mirror and you ask yourself, what kind of man am I? See, I know what kind of man I am. And better yet, AJ Styles, I know what kind of man you are. You're the kind of man that parlays a personal relationship with the president of this company into professional success. You're the type of man that takes advantage of a weakened, helpless, alcoholic woman and impregnates her. And you, AJ Styles, are the type of man that when the going gets tough, would rather lay down than stand up. So you see, AJ, you're not the type of man at all that will win a last man standing match. And everybody in the world now has my permission to drink to that. <laughs> the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Mumbai, India, Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay Dutt 
is back in TNA. His win over Rubik's back on June the 28th on Impact Wrestling vaulted him into the X Division title tournament. To me, Sanjay Dutt among the most accomplished X Division competitors that's never held the X Division title. And his opponent from Philadelphia, Sean Cameron! You know, on paper, both Cameron and Dutt are 12 year pros. But in terms of high profile, big time matches, it's a huge experience edge here for Sanjay Dutt. I'll tell you what, that just means Rashad wants it. Maybe just a little bit more. He hasn't had that taste of the spotlight like Sanjay Dutt has had. And obviously, when you're trying to climb up to the top, get a spot on this roster, you're hungry. You want it. And obviously, Sanjay Dutt sees that opportunity as well. He sees that X Division championship hanging above the ring. Both men want it badly. And one of them will emerge to the Ultimate X match later tonight. And JB, in light of what we have seen tonight from Mason Andrews, both in the last chance as well as in the first round of the X Division title tournament, how impressive was the win on Impact Wrestling 10 days ago when Rashad Cameron moved into the tournament by defeating Mason Andrews? Oh, so impressive. Obviously, so much at stake here. And so many, oh, great double drop kick attempt in both men. And we have things trending all over the place. Kenny King trending earlier in the matchup. We saw Mason Andrews trending. Love your feedback. Getting a lot of it tonight so far here at Destination X. And I got to tell you, a lot of people on Twitter have asked, what, what has Sanjay Dutt been up to the last three years? Well, I can tell you, I just got back about five or six months ago from India with Sanjay, where he competed for a number of months. Oh, wow, great drop kick. And to see the response for that man walking the streets of Mumbai, Pune, the different places we went to, absolutely astronomical. A, a country of a billion people, and this man can't even walk the streets without getting mobbed. He is a, a huge, huge name. They love, they support him, uh, and he was very, very successful over there. Now, a whole different ball game. He's got to get through not only Rashad Cameron tonight, but in order to get that X Division championship, he's going to have to do it the Ultimate X. Look out, we saw Cameron, how he flew on Impact Wrestling against Mason Andrews. Much the same here against Sanjay. Two, one, five. And Rashad taking it to the skies as well. Look at that, clearing the top rope. Easily clearing the top rope and coming crashing down on Sanjay Dutt. Both men can fly, no question about it. Rashad not happy as he goes for the pin and gets two. Not happy when you say that he's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now he's from Philly. There's a difference in Rashad's eyes. There is a difference in terms of the, the fans, obviously, fanatical fans with the baseball, fanatical fans with football, and fanatical fans with wrestling. He is proud to be from the city of Philadelphia. You know, like no other, the fans of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, when it comes to loving, hating, voicing their opinion on whatever sport, whatever team that they are watching or involved in. Try and wear a New York jersey anywhere in that city. Yeah, good luck. Now Sante into the ropes. Oh! Wow. The way that Sante went flying with that drop kick variation right through the ring ropes. Appeared as if Dutt was going to go for a moonsault. Cut off by Cameron. You hear the impact as the guardrail is used as a weapon. Cameron in to break the count. Avoiding the double count out here. Now going to roll a weakened Sanjay in and try and put him away and move to Ultimate X. Come on, Sanjay, get up! Look at him! Look at him! Cameron with both the physicality as well as the bad mouth, and this time elevates Dutt up into the air. 
right back on top. Another quick pin attempt, and Dutt able to reach out, make contact with the ropes. Match number three in the X Division title tournament. As one of these two men moves ahead to Ultimate X. I'll tell you what, what, a, what an exhibition match it's already going to be. We already know Kenny King's in there. We already know Mason Andrews is in there. Another pin attempt here and another two count. Chance for Cameron to use his leg strength. Body scissors applied to Sanjay. At the same time, you take away his air, take away his breath, and you keep Sanjay Dutt on the mat. Not taking issue with referee Earl Hebner. He follows up with some big chops across the chest. Now into the ropes. Quickness, speed of Sanjay. So damn impressive. Like a bulldog style face plant. In that middle turnbuckle. Then both boots. Oh my. Slingshot across. Leg drop. Back of the head of Cameron, whose neck and windpipe snap against the rope. Straight down splash. Here we go. We saw an exact combination from Sanjay Dutt on impact in his big win. And Sanjay really has come a long way, no question about it. But that X Division Championship has always eluded him. And that's the one goal he says he has never attained in his career. He wants it more than ever. Yeah, he talked about it on Impact Wrestling. Post-match interview with Christy Hemi. First, it's the Dutt arm drag, then the boot. Cameron beats him to the ropes. Able to roll through. And rolling over Sanjay Dutt into a submission move, an arm bar, and obviously knowing that this is a huge opportunity, he's going to use everything he can. Not happy with our senior official, Earl Hebner. He's got Sanjay in his sights. Instead, Dutt reverses, counters. Well, he went for that jumping DDT that he was successful with on impact. But now Sanjay counters it and goes to the top rope. Oh, my. You are kidding me. There it is. Double foot stop. Here's the cover. Here's the pin. Here's the win. Yo. Sanjay Dutt delivers once again with a moonsault stop. And he delivered it squarely on his opponent. And it's almost like if that was in the Olympics, it, it's a perfect landing. He lands directly on Rashad Cameron, and that does it. He won his match on impact the exact same way. I'll tell you what, what an impressive showing. For both men, Rashad Cameron took things to the skies first from the top over the top. And then, look at that, right down on the midsection of Rashad Cameron. Now, nobody's going to go from that. Absolutely nobody stands a chance after a move like that. Sanjay Dutt going on to the Ultimate X match later tonight. And could that destiny be his? That elusive X Division Championship. That has really been a, a focal point of his entire career. He wants it, and he wants it in a bad way. JB got to be impressed with Sanjay Dutt. No question. No question about it. Obviously, after, you know, we mentioned before, uh, going back to India for, with Ring Ka King, our, our sister promotion over there, and being so successful, coming off that wave of momentum here, back in Impact Wrestling. Now he has an opportunity, 
in that Ultimate X match. We'll see what happens. Three of our four have qualified. We have one more left tonight. Sanjay, third man to qualify in this X Division tournament. And speaking of that tournament, one of the stars of the X Division who will not be competing tonight. And we're talking about Jesse Sorensen, JB, you and I in the booth. Last February at Against All Odds when Jesse faced Zima Ion. Yeah, who could forget that opening match at Against All Odds. Uh, Zima Ion took it to the skies. Jesse Sorensen just did not get up. And we are obviously very concerned. The ambulance called, taken to the hospital. And Mike, Jesse Sorensen that night suffered a broken neck. Uh, just, just an emotional night all around, no question about it. Uh, what a competitor, what a heart. You know, I, I'll never forget how difficult it was to see this young man in his early 20s having to deal with such a serious injury. No question about it, and obviously a serious injury that, uh, you know, you just don't like to see. We, we obviously have had a, a level of danger elevated with these type of matches. The X Division, we've always talked about the high-risk aspect of it. Well, we saw a fine example right there of how dangerous what these guys do really is. And now let's watch this special update on Jesse Sorensen's rehab. You know, the, the whole thing, with, I'm in Houston watching it, watching the same thing everybody else is seeing, waiting to hear. That's my baby. And, and I didn't know what was going on. I, I didn't know if he was hurt. I could see him laying on the floor. I remember seeing Zima come off the top. And the next thing I know, I was knocked out. I was laying on the floor. And I heard the ref counting me out. I think we're gonna get Jesse back to 100% where he can go wrestle. Um, clearly, when you have an injury like this, you're gonna be predisposed to re-injuries. So he's gonna have to be careful. Um, one of the things we're doing right now is putting him on a program to strengthen his neck, to support those tissues where he uh, did suffer this injury. And um, with enough strengthening, conditioning, and just being smart in the ring, I think he's gonna have a long, successful career. That's some good work, Jesse. All right, you're looking really good. Made a lot of progress. I'll uh, look to see you again on Monday. Sounds good. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Anytime you break a bone in your neck, that's a big deal. I mean, there is a potential for paralysis and death. Jesse's very, very fortunate that he didn't suffer a lot more consequence from this injury than he did. What I loved to do was take it away from me before I was kind of ready for it to be taken away. I was pretty much on top of the world on my way of becoming an X Division champion, and then it got taken away, you know, by one moonsault. When it first happened, going from thinking I was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life to being able to walk out of the hospital on my own, you know, just like I said when in the last interview when I was in the hospital, I'm just going to try to make it as positive as I can. And like they said, I'm going to make full recovery, so all you can do is stay positive. Jesse's mom, Jesse's girlfriend, greet him at ringside.
You know, right before I came out here, Dixie Carter asked me, she said, uh, how's it feel, are you nervous? And I looked at her and I said, you know, it's just good to feel anything. Because the last time I was in this arena, I was being carried off on a stretcher, unable to feel anything from the neck down. I laid in an intensive care unit, staring at the ceiling for days, wondering if my career was over and not knowing if I would ever walk again. But you know, the last thing I heard before I left this arena was the sound of each and every one of you chanting my name. And you know, it's that same chant that motivated me to walk down this ramp, get in this ring and stand before you and tell you that God put me on the face of this earth to be a professional wrestler. That is what I am and that is what I always will be. So to everyone in the back, my family, and to each and every one of you that has stuck by me, believed in me, and supported me through all this, thank you so much. Seriously, guys, from the bottom of my heart, no, thank you. And Zima Ion, I know you're out there listening, so don't think I forgot about you. Zima, I hope that you win the X Division title tonight. Because just like you tried to take my career from me, I'm coming back to take that belt from you. And I'm making a promise that right now, this time next year, Destination X 2013, I will be the TNA X Division Champion. And I will cash in that title and go on to become the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. What a special moment. What an inspiration. Jesse Sorensen's first appearance in the Impact Zone. We saw his mother, his girlfriend, overcome with emotion at ringside. Great to see Jesse Sorensen back here in the Impact Zone. I'll tell you what, what a great family, what a great support staff he has. His mom, Lori, an absolute sweetheart of a lady who has been there through every step of this recovery. And you can bet, Mike, if he says it, I believe it. Jesse Sorensen, next year at Destination X, has a good ring to it. certainly sense the tension as Sorensen went to leave the ringside area, go up the ramp. And here's the man who's responsible. And, and it's one of those things, JB, talking about Zima Ion, where we're, we're not placing the, the finger of blame necessarily. For one fall. Just the fact that he showed zero remorse. Zima and Mike, even something more disgusting, that was the very first interaction those two have had 
since that incident. No phone calls, nothing. Zima Ion, yeah, hope you're proud. And his opponent from Mount Clemens, Michigan, Flip Casanova! Time for another match in the X Division title tournament. The five-year pro, Flip Casanova, off the victory over Dakota Garso on Thursday's Impact. Moves in to the tournament. Now he's got to face Zima Ion. We're going to see which of these two men advance to Ultimate X and Casanova. Caught with the cheap shot from behind, not surprisingly, by Ion. And that's typical Ion, an opportunist, no question about it. Oh, wow, what a close line. Takes his head off. And as we mentioned before, Zima Ion really showed at no point any remorse for what happened with Jesse Sorensen. Obviously, he didn't try and break his neck on purpose. It happened. It was a freak incident. But at the same time, at least, you know, send some check in with the guy. At least see how he's doing. Not a single phone call, a message, and he texts the guy. Something, nothing. Casanova got caught with the boot, but able to avoid the clothesline and then snap off the head scissors. Casanova tells us his ambition to be the greatest high flyer in the world. And here he comes. Wow. I'll tell you what, he showed it in his match on Impact. He uses the ropes for, for springboard in every different direction imaginable. And he's in there with a guy who can fly as well in Zima Ion. Casanova going to employ a high flying Lucha Libre based style. Patterns himself after a wrestler named Volador Jr. from Mexico, who is a part of Team Mexico, victorious in the 2008 World Cup here in TNA. And Ion had that scouted but for a standing moonsault, scouted it and just kicked him away. Knees to the back of Casanova, courtesy of Zima Ion, the eight year pro who's competed all over the US, Japan, Mexico. You know, with Zima Ion, who was in the Destination X match one year ago where Austin Aries was victorious. He certainly was, but he also impressed the impact officials enough to be offered a contract, and obviously, since that time, has made a lot of waves in the X Division. Competing here tonight for a shot in the Ultimate X later on tonight. Did you see that? Mike, I don't mind telling you, this guy's a, he's a little odd. Uh, proud to tell you, be the first one to tell you, in every media interview he does, his mom's a mail order bride from the Philippines. Loves that it's unique. Loves that he's unique. Loves that he Walks to the beat of a different drummer, if you would. And Me, myself, and Ion. It's all about him. And if he could fit a few more wonderful adjectives about himself in there, he probably would. But you can't deny the fact that he has been very successful when he's focused. Loves making sure that his hair is just right. He's in the hairspray and maybe too much showboating on the part of Zima Ion as Casanova able to catch him off guard. Mentioned those springboard moves earlier. Look at that. Wow. Twisting move by Flip. Passing over the cover. And that's what makes Flip unique. He said, from any different direction, any style, springboarding from the ropes is his thing. He loves it. And he can take it from the top just the same. Step one one of these two competitors is going to compete, compete in Ultimate X later tonight. Oh. Trouble that time, zero reward on the high risk move. And that was the move he won the match with. Zima counters it there with a impressive move, obviously from the back now. What is this? Oh, wow. Straight down goes Casanova. Ion follows, pins, and gets the three count. Your winner, Zima Ion! Well, Mike, we have the main of quite an ultimate X later on tonight. Zima Ion advances and will get a shot at the X Division Championship. And now we know the playing field. Ultimate X later on tonight to crown 
A new X Division champion. Yeah, one of four men. Zima Ion to join Mason Andrews, Kenny Kane, Sanjay Dutt in Ultimate X later tonight. Whoever is going to take down the X Division Championship belt will be victorious in Ultimate X and be the new champion as we take another look. Just face first down in the mat with so much momentum, it was enough to enable Zima Ion to capture the win. And I'll tell you what, with the field as it is now, we are looking at a very dynamic foursome going into the Ultimate X later on tonight. Fasten your seatbelt, that is going to be a wild ride, no question about it. Ultimate X still to come tonight for the X Division title as we send it to the back. And Christy Henny. We are live backstage at Destination X looking at your comments on Twitter. You guys are on fire. Everyone wants to know who is going to be the next X Division champion. Now I'm here with some of the contenders. Kenny King, your thoughts? My thoughts? My thoughts is that these dudes don't have a shot. No disrespect, boys, but I'm Kenny King, and this is my coronation day. And we got Sanjay Dutt. Great job tonight. What are your thoughts on this? Well, you just saw me drop the bomb, and I'm going to do it one more time, and I'm going to finally become the X Division champion. And new to TNA, Mason Andrews. I hate to tell you both this, but this is my moment. What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say, your moment? No, 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 no. This is my moment. This is my show. You guys are so excited. An opportunity to become X Division champions. Big whoopee. Because tonight in the main event, the only match that matters, the It Factor, Bobby Roode, is going to walk in and destroy your little poster boy, Austin Aries. Tonight, all three of you will fail. The X Division will fail. Austin Aries will fail. And I will walk out once again with my World Heavyweight Championship. Well, it is a cocky, confident, and arrogant World Heavyweight Champion as we go to the Bound for Glory Series leaderboard, JB. Oh, it's, it's exciting. And as we head towards October's Bound for Glory, the Cowboy James Storm on top of the points. However, Samoa Joe trailing him in second place with 27. And look at Kurt Angle, just uh, 20 points now, of course. At the very top, just seven points separates these two individuals as they try and get that shot to the main event, challenging for the World Heavyweight Championship at our biggest pay-per-view event of the year, Bound for Glory. Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe! You know, JB, people always ask me on Twitter at Real Mike today about my favorite matches that I've called through the years. It's so difficult to narrow that down. I will say that Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe, to me, it's, it's the best rivalry that I have seen in 10 years of TNA, and it's time to write the latest chapter in that storied rivalry. Who'll ever forget the headbutt heard all around the world? And his opponent from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle! And who will ever forget Genesis 2006 when Samoa Joe's 18-month winning streak came to an end courtesy of this man, Kurt Angle and his ankle lock. We saw the updated leaderboard in the Bound for Glory series. And that is his daughter and son, Cody and Kira, here tonight. Uh, obviously at ringside with his dad in the ring, Kurt Angle. Talking about that updated leaderboard that we saw just moments ago. That reflects what happened this past Friday night in Charleston, South Carolina, 
when Kurt Angle forced the Pope to submit. He picked up 10 points, and as a result, now has 20 points in the Bound for Glory series. Yeah, we were in Charleston on Friday night, great TNA Live event, and I flew back uh, on the same plane with Kurt Angle on Saturday morning, managed to weasel my way up to first class and talk to Kurt for a little bit. And Kurt made it very clear. How about this? From here on out, he says every match he competes in in the Bound for Glory series, he is going to try and go for that 10 points. He's going to try and end it via submission. And obviously, earning those extra points, he feels will be the key to getting the advantage, getting the points, and continuing all the way to the main event of Bound for Glory in October. To be able to do that, he's got to go through the Samoan submission machine, a man who also could use those 10 points in a big way tonight. It's a great strategy, and you know that both of these men who specialize in submissions will be doing their damnedest to get that 10 points that you pick up with a submission victory. If you look at it from Kurt Angle's standpoint, if he were to get a pin win over Samoa Joe tonight, he'd move into a tie for second with 27 points. Submission win would put him into second with 30 points, while Samoa Joe at the same time could pick up seven points from a pin as we see Angle immediately go for that ankle lock in the early going. If Samoa Joe were able to get a submission win on Kurt Angle, he'd pick up 10 points. And looking at the updated leaderboard, Samoa Joe would, would move into first place with the 10 points, right? Your calculations are indeed accurate, Professor. That is true. Both men obviously in a position right now with this matchup. We heard it. I heard it first person from Kurt Angle. I would imagine Samoa Joe is going to have the exact same game plan. Obviously, two different wrestlers in their own selves, obviously in their, their styles, their personality, but both just among uh, the best at submission wrestling. You can't top these two. And obviously, whoever gets the advantage is going to try and capitalize and put the exclamation point on the end of this sentence via submission tonight. It was just such a surprise when you looked at the Cowboy, James Storm. The time that he won that opening gauntlet match, took a commanding lead in the Bound for Glory series. And now to have competitors like Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, potentially breathing down his neck or possibly even taking over the lead. Face wash in the corner coming up. behind the running knee from Samoa Joe. Directed to the head of Kurt Angle. 15 minute time limit, like it is for all matches in the Bound for Glory series. And what a turnaround in terms of one year to the next for Samoa Joe when it comes to that Bound for Glory series. Oh, you're certainly right, Mike. There's no question about it. As he looks at the points and as he sees who is on top of the leaderboard with the Cowboy James Storm out in front after that big 20 point win to kick the whole thing off. He knows that his strategy has to be win and win often all the way through October. You've got to have a several month run of success to go on the mound for glory. You love the physicality when these two men square off and this time and hurled all the way over the top. Samoa Joe tossing Kurt out, and you see Angle landing well past the map that covers the arena floor out of the concrete. Head of steam for Joe. Big 300 pounder goes airborne. Suicide dive by Joe right on target. And there isn't another 300 pounder in this industry that can fly like Samoa Joe. Obviously, we've seen the strength, we've seen the submission, we've seen the size. Nobody moves like Samoa Joe in that ring. Wow. First, Kurt tossed all the way out to the concrete. Joe immediately follows up. You pointed out the quickness of Samoa Joe, and it was on display right there. Big forearm shot off the suicide dive. Angle rolled back in, and Joe left himself wide open. Surprised to see that Samoa Joe would put himself in a position like that. Complexion of the match quickly turns in favor of the Olympic gold medalist. Joe able to counter, turn it around on Kurt, then punctuate it with the kick to the back of the head of Angle. Kurt set up in the corner. The muscle buster attempt by Joe, stopped, blocked, 
by the angle headbutt of all things. And then how about Kurt's follow-up move? Well, obviously a drop kick off the top rope. Not a not a move you see normally from Kurt Angle, but you know what? We've also seen Kurt Angle moonsault from the top of a steel cage. We've seen a lot from this man, and obviously when the chips are down, Kurt Angle will take great risks. Look at that. It turns a great reward. Angle senses that he's back in control. Just like he told you, JB, he's gonna try and go the submission route to try and pick up the 10 points. It's a very sound strategy when you, when you are as accomplished in submission moves as Kurt Angle is. Same for Samoa Joe. Joe back up to his feet. Gonna reel off the elbows. Series of shots to the midsection by Joe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stopped by Kurt, who unleashes the Belly-to-belly -belly release suplex. Kirk drops down. Go for the pin win here. Saw the opening right there. Why not take advantage of it? And Kurt Angle always talks about his great opponents he's faced over his incredible career. He lists Samoa Joe among the best and obviously has a, has a deep respect for what Joe does in the ring. Whether or not they get along, well, that's a different story. But at the same time, he knows what he's in there with. He knows that he can't take this lightly for one moment. And obviously, at this stage of the game, with the points on the line at Bound for Glory series, and, and looking at that October main event opportunity, both men need these points right now in their positions, second and fourth place, respectively. Couldn't agree more. Huge match in terms of points in the series as we find out who's gonna move on in the month of October to challenge at our biggest pay-per-view event of the year. Quick strikes from Angle, caught Joe off guard. That time, Joe able to get the elbow up. We made the announcement on Thursday night on Impact Wrestling. Phoenix, Arizona gonna be the location for Bound for Glory this year. As Joe, out of the corner, just amazing for someone his size. Caught him late, Lariat, follow pin, and no, just two. That one was close. Real close. Excited about going to Phoenix for Bound for Glory? Can't wait to go to Phoenix. We have never done a show in Phoenix. I could list you 500 places around the world we've been to in the last 10 years, but never before in Phoenix, Arizona. And obviously, looking at the biggest pay-per-view event of the year, I have a lot of people in Arizona. We hear from followers on Twitter, on Facebook. The crowd is gonna be fantastic. The building brand new. Looking forward to head into Phoenix in October. Joe trying to exploit the power game. Got caught by the angle elbow, but then Joe was prepared. Inverted atomic drop, followed by a boot that drops Kurt. The 300 pounder again, airborne. This time with the backsplash, leads to a pin and again, angle. Barely getting that shoulder up before Hebner counts three. Frustration on the face of Joe. Thought he had the pin right there. Thought he was gonna pick up seven points. Snap, slam. Joe leads to a cover. Someone went on top. Here goes a potential submission win as he attempts an arm bar, but the perfect counter by Kurt Angle. That's presence of mind, that's experience. He knows he's gotta lock his other hand. And look at that, Kurt Angle is. reverses it into the ankle lock. Ankle lock, submission hold. The patented finishing move of Kurt, it's applied, but Joe able to use his weight, roll through, free leg kicks him off, wow. Suplex one, Kurt still has the grip. When the, and it's one thing to be suplexing someone who's 240, 250, and that's impressive. But then when you do it to the 300 pounder. And that's a risky move by Angle as well, because sure he is. knows if he doesn't get Joe over him vertically, it's, it's done. He's gonna land right squarely on him. Look at this. He's gonna try it for a third time. And does. Sensational series of three suplexes by Kurt Angle. But boy, it took a lot out of Kurt as well. Angle slowly back up. But once he gets to his feet, he's got that renewed 
Enthusiasm as he slides back behind. This time, Joe has an answer. There's another answer. Just boot him right in the face. Setting him up now. We've seen this in the corner before. If he's able to get him up, you know what's coming, Mike. Usually step one to the rear naked choke is the muscle buster. And out of the corner. Oh, Kurt slides straight down. Able to not go for the pin attempt, but instead rolls through and applies the ankle lock. Pressure is on Samoa Joe. Fight through. Come up with a counter. Make your way to the ropes and get a break. Because if you tap out, Kurt Angle's going to pick up 10 points in the series. Again, it's the weight of Joe as he rolls through and uses the free leg to kick off. Wow. Angle charges in. Joe overpowers. Kirk set up on top again. Joe. This time he's got him for the muscle buster. And this time he hits it. Joe gonna go for the rear naked choke here or the pin. It's the pin. Going for seven points and Angle gets it up before three. Well, I didn't think that was gonna happen. That looked like a sure pinfall victory for Samoa Joe off the muscle buster. He saw Angle down in the mat, decided to go for the quick seven points, not going for the submission win. And I think most interesting out of that is Joe opted to go for the pin instead of the submission knowing and at this stage of the game, he thought, well, I know I can put him away with the muscle buster. I'm going to try it, go for the pin, get the seven points. And now look at this. Rear naked choke is applied. But amazingly, angle drops down. And check out the ring positioning of the ankle lock. Dead center in the middle. Long way for Joe to go. When it in comes, terms, yeah, in terms of getting a break, is he going to tap right here? Is Kirk going to pick up the 10? A lot of times it's not how you get your opponent in these moves, it's where you get your opponent in something like the ankle lock. And look at Kurt Angle dragging Joe back to the center of the ring. Just when it looked like Joe was making up ground to get the rope break. Kurt instead, oh, able to roll through. How about that? What a reversal. Rear naked choke is applied. Kakina clutch. Samoa Joe, he's got the rear naked choke. He's got his legs wrapped around Kurt as well. Kirk thinking about tapping. You can sense his hand right there. Is he going to tap? Oh, Kurt fighting through the pain. All right, Joe just has that cinched in. Joe's got the firm grip. Kirk doing everything within his power to try and break it. But Joe right on top of him. And not only Samoa Joe with the choke, but putting all of his weight on Kurt, who digs down deep and Angle comes back. Angle slam could be Kurt's pin. Cover. Here we go. Both men throwing everything in their arsenal at each other. It has been just what you would anticipate in this storied rivalry with so much at stake in the Bound for Glory series. Straps come down, and if there's any way for Kurt to turn it up another notch, that's what he's gonna do. Oh my, what a kick by Joe right into the face of Kurt. Again, Joe up, able to slide over this time. No angle, slam instead. It's Joe back with the rear naked choke. And Angle trying for the roll through, and in the, in the process took himself down to the ground. Not where you want to be when you're in this move. Look at that. Look at the situation Kurt Angle is in. Referee Earl Hebner right on top of the scene. Joe has that left arm hooked as well. That means Kurt only has his right hand free to try and bust that choke. Kurt fighting. Doing everything within his power. But boy, Samoa Joe has had it on for a long time. He has it locked in. Cinched in so tight to Samoa Joe. And Earl Hebner calls for the bell. Kurt Angle went several seconds there without even moving, and that's that's the sign you're out. That's the sign you, you've got nothing left. And Kurt Angle hasn't moved since. Your winner!
people may not have tapped out, but in the opinion of our senior official, Earl Hebner, Angle had passed out to the point where Kurt was not responding. And I think in Earl's opinion, he called a halt to the match and stopped it for Kurt's safety as, as Kurt has a complaint. And Earl explaining his point of view to Kurt Angle. It's obviously a tough decision for Earl Hebner, but when there's no, when there's just no response, what else can you do but call for the bell? It's his job as a referee to oversee this and to make sure, look at this, let's go back to see what happened earlier. Over the top rope goes Angle, through the middle and top rope goes Samoa Joe to the floor, from the top rope goes Angle, and these two threw everything they had at each other. Knowing what's at stake, those points of the Bound for Glory series, Three belly-to-back suplexes in a row. A muscle buster by the Samoan submission machine. And we thought that was it. A second. And obviously what happened, the angle slam. And then from there, Mike, it turned into a battle of submissions and what we saw. Yeah, it definitely went back and forth. Great action in this match. Here's Kurt coming so close to getting seven points. And look at how close Earl is looking at Kurt Hebner, or Kurt, uh, Kurt Angle. Hebner's right in there and made the decision at that point. Kurt's not responding. You have no choice. And look at that. With that, he's right, 10 points. And Mike, we, we have to look at the updated standings. Look at this. My updated how this can what a huge win for the Samoan Submission Machine. 10 points, and all of a sudden, that commanding lead for the Cowboy James Storm, it's gone. Samoa Joe takes over. Certainly, James Storm was the front runner coming out of that first match, winning 20 points, but Samoa Joe has earned it with victory after victory. Whether it's via submission or via pinfall, Samoa Joe on top of the leaderboard in the Bound for Glory series. Ladies and gentlemen, up next at Destination X, it's AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels. Things aren't always what they seem. All right, AJ, you say things aren't what they seem? I'd love for you to explain this. We have proof positive of the sordid affair between AJ and Dixie Carter. Are you coming this weekend? You got to feel from all the stuff that's going on here. That's why it's right in the middle of it. This thing between you and I, we cannot keep this secret. People are going to get hurt, and I just thought I had it under control. People are already getting hurt. We're past that. Hey, Jim. What's going on, man? What's going on? I mean, tonight you kicked me in the head. Sunday, the pay per view at Slammiversary, you weren't even there. All you want to do is beat those guys up. What's going on with you, man? You got to get this crap with Dixie out of your head. Today is a great day in Impact Wrestling because we are the World Tag Team Champions of the World. We got to get this out of the open. I'm falling apart. You understand what I'm saying? My name is Claire Lynch. You don't know me, and Dixie and AJ, we're hoping they could keep it that way. Dixie and AJ are not having an affair. I've been trying to get clean. AJ took me to rehab. They kept my secret. I'm sorry, Dan, this is a liar. But Dixie, turn that frown upside down. There's plenty of reason for you to be happy as well. You can see that she's pregnant. But what she didn't tell you about her blessing is that the bastard's daddy is AJ Stone. The phenomenal AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, who will be the last man standing. The falling contest scheduled for one fall is a last man standing match. AJ 
Introducing first from the City of Angels, Christopher Daniels. In light of what we have witnessed for the past several months, is there any better way to settle the differences in the bad blood between Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles than to put them in a match where anything and everything goes, no disqualification, we will determine a winner when one man cannot answer the 10 count. It's last man standing rules. the face of Impact Wrestling, Mike, as you are the voice of this company and has been for 10 years. AJ Styles, to me, is the face of this company and has been for the last 10 years. And as a man who, who I'm proud of to call a part of this company and the face of this company, regardless of what Christopher Daniels ridiculously claims. Well, difficult for me to argue that point. I certainly wouldn't, it's, it's your opinion. And in terms of, of a rivalry, what we have seen between these two through the years, both in the ring as well as outside of the ring, especially in the past year or so, with the shocking allegations and accusations from Christopher Daniels, I could not argue about Styles and Daniels being one of the best rivalries ever in the decade of TNA. Cat and mouse game by Daniels, who tries to stay one step ahead of AJ, and when AJ comes in, Daniels spits right in his face. They tell the whole story of this relationship between two men who for years were the closest of friends. But there's just something about, whether it's jealousy or, or whatever it is. I'll tell you what it is, it's jealousy. I, I completely, oh look out, into the, wow. We said this was gonna be a fight, folks. And I think it's jealousy for the simple fact that these two were close friends for so many years and competed, but AJ just always seemed to have something else. AJ always seemed to get that opportunity and take full advantage of it. And I think after Christopher Daniels realized that after so many years, what's the one thing he could do when he couldn't compete on a level physically? He thought he went to a different approach, and that's mind games, that's getting into his head. And obviously it's been working for him. Christopher Daniels won half of the World Tag Team Champions. And your anticipation pre-match, JB, looks to be dead on. Styles Daniels, yeah, they may have faced each other maybe dozens of times in the past in wrestling matches. But, but this last man standing match, I don't think this is one that just because of the inherent potential for physicality here, that they're never going to forget. We're gonna remember this one forever. Well, Mike, the difference between this match and the previous match, you don't have to get the pin. You don't have to get the submission. You have to beat the other person so badly they just simply cannot continue. And look at that drop kick. You're gonna see wrestling moves like that because AJ throws arguably the best drop kick in the game. And that time he, he caught Daniels perfectly, nailed him with the drop kick. So you'll see wrestling moves that will set up AJ's ability to deliver the pain and punishment. 
that you talked about, to try and beat a man so bad that he can't continue. Because that's how you score the win in this match, when he can't answer the 10 count. And that is a whole different strategy altogether. Last man standing rules. You've got to beat your opponent so bad that he can't get to his feet. He can't use any support, can't use the ropes to get up. And that's how we'll determine a winner. Wow. Just, just suplexed him into the corner. Way more than a suplex. Suplex is the name of the move. When you saw the impact, the velocity that Daniels went back first into the corner turnbuckles and into the ring ropes, you see that extra level of pain that Styles is bringing. Daniels going to try and turn it around and all of a sudden does. With AJ pinned up against the corner, Daniel's gonna unleash the chops. The knife edge. Chops delivered right to the chest and AJ's quickness allows him to turn it around. And now here comes those chops from Styles. Somehow that connected. Probably not the last punch or kick we are going to see thrown in this matchup. Not a surprise that in a last man standing match where anything goes, that weapons like that steel chair might be employed. Daniels knew that he had AJ in trouble. And while he tossed the chair, and you saw how quickly Daniels sprinted around the corner to continue the assault, which now sees him not only raking the eyes of AJ, but just almost fish hooking and trying to put his, his finger in the eye socket of Styles. And there's nothing the referee can do about a fish hook or anything that we obviously. It's anything goes. Anything goes. And when you have a steel chair in the ring and you're the referee, all you really do at that point is count to 10, and whoever can make it to their feet or, or continue in the matchup is, you know, going to be the winner. It's a situation where the physicality is going to tell the story of this matchup. Now Daniels in the corner. AJ goes ooh, right up the chair. Caught nothing but the corner. Watch out, watch out. Look at that. Uh, what, what happened to the chair? And obviously look at what happened to AJ Styles' back. And, and that's it, that's a steel folding Gotta chair. Take another look at this. Oh god. And think of what a move like that does in terms of, of limiting, inhibiting the overall offensive abilities of AJ Styles. A confident Daniels. Going to try and follow up on the advantage as he drops out to the floor. And AJ weakened and weary. Well, in a matchup where the object is to, to make it to your feet, be the last man standing, going after your opponent's back. Is a great strategy. And the more Christopher Daniels continues in this matchup, it should be interesting to see if he continues that. What strategies he implies of Flores to actually get the win. And he knows what's at stake here. on the floor now. Oh, AJ Styles busted open. 
bare knuckles of Christopher Daniels with shot after shot to the head of, of Styles and well, you're right, AJ's forehead split wide open and the impact, again, the focus of Daniels' offense, so much of it has been on AJ's back. This time the suplex by Daniels and he's got something in mind in regard to the, the steel steps. But before Daniels can use those steps, AJ tries to fight back. Oh. And Mike, you ask any competitor when they when they realize that they're busted open and blood's pouring out of their head mentally, and not just forget about physically, mentally. That does something to you. You know that you're in a fight. You know that you're in for the fight of your life when you start seeing your own blood. And obviously, AJ Styles is, is going through that right now. How about the advantage, though, for Christopher Daniels? You talked about the disadvantage with the blood flowing down AJ's face. And, and, and of course, potential to limit his vision. But at the same time, once Daniels sees and senses that he's weakened AJ, Daniels' confidence level is going to rise. Watch out. Styles have the presence of mind to see that coming. And now look at this from the outside of the ring. Springboard, here he goes. AJ flies and contact was made with the steel chair. And I think the steel chair that Daniels was holding, I believe it went through it and it hit Daniels in the head. Let's see if we can take a closer look right there. You can see that's exactly what happened. Well, it sure did. It hit him squarely on the head. That's got to knock Daniel silly for, I mean, obviously, that steel chair now the stairs. AJ sees the steps that, that Daniels had set up to try and use against him. I mean, Daniels went head first into those steps. That's one thing to go head first, but how about the ferocity of AJ putting him head first into the steel steps? Styles went down to a knee as contact was made. Watch this. AJ threw everything, all of his power behind that. Oh, now Daniels, just like AJ, Daniels has been split open. Well, split open he is, Mike, and that blood's starting to trickle down the face, the forehead, and Daniels obviously feeling those punches. AJ Styles goes right to it, sees the opportunity, opens him up even further. And now that confidence is gone from Daniels. He knows. Daniels puts it in reverse. Trying to make his way up the ramp. AJ in pursuit, hot pursuit. Boy, action just to the side of the broadcast table here as Styles follows up the overhand right, putting the boots to Daniels, who's in a precarious position. Just, just a few feet away from us here, JB. Three. Now Styles what, going to the other side of the ramp. Doing? Full speed ahead for Styles. And, ooh. Oh, the impact as both men went for the clothesline. And both men hit with such force that they went down. And you heard the sickening thud. And now this becomes a battle of who has the most pain threshold. Really, at this point, you saw something like that go down. And both men to their feet. It's last man standing. Did you hear that? Styles just told the referee, don't even bother counting, I'm not done.
It has been exactly the war that we anticipated. AJ looks to the crowd. Could he be going for the Styles Clash? Oh, God! How about Daniel's ability to all of a sudden, out of nowhere, turn the Styles Clash around and the back body drop? When we mentioned the word sickening thud earlier, you heard it again when AJ crashed off the back body drop. Oh, God. We heard that, actually, we felt that. I, that this is just feet from our, from our broadcast booth here to see this. To see this war, to see this fight so close, and the blood coming down both men's foreheads. And the loss of blood there by Daniels, you saw he appeared to be almost dizzy as he was teetering on the side of the of the entrance. Wait a minute, where's AJ Cole? Oh my! <laughs> Referee Hebner putting in the count. Daniels must answer before 10. Brian Hebner's up to three. He's at five. He's at seven. What the hell? Oh, oh God. Kazarian comes out of nowhere. And contact made with AJ. And look at where he landed, JB. Yeah, he landed. Went he, flying all the way over. He had no idea that was coming. And out of nowhere, Kazarian comes in. I don't believe it. In a match of this importance, the interference by Kazarian, and think about it. They're trying to exploit the no disqualification situation. Daniels can't be disqualified because of this. Are we up to three here? Referee Brian Hebner. He's at four. Hebner's at five as AJ still down. The seven. Can AJ beat the ten count? He's at eight, but he's got to get back up to his feet. Daniels closes the gap. And again, using the guardrail. Well, I'm amazed that AJ was able to make it up by 10. They took the, everything the, the he had. The contact like. that Kazarian hit him with, the distance that AJ flew, the way that AJ landed on the concrete and into the guardrail. Daniels takes Styles, tosses him up on the ramp so that he can get further distance between AJ and the table. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Goes double underhook. That usually means Angel's ways. Oh, AJ! Quick surge of offense and energy by Styles. Able to run Daniels into Kazarian. And Kazarian had a bad landing on that steel ground. Oh, come on. Pele kick. It rocked Daniels. It surprised him. It caught him completely unaware as AJ teeters on the side of the ramp. Is AJ gonna go for the clash? Gonna no take way. him up? Oh my god! No Not way. off the ramp! Not off the ramp! Here he goes! Oh god! Just three. We're at five. Count is at eight. Counts at nine. Is AJ up? Is AJ up? Henry calls for the bell.
what what else do you say to that? Uh, you see that obviously both men are going to be feeling the, the after effects. A match that has taken so much out of both men, and they're going to be feeling this for years. Uh, I, there, there's no question about it. AJ Styles with a huge gash on his arm. And Daniels, look at that, just a, just a bloody mess. He has been through war. Both men have been through war. We, we said it earlier, JB. Styles and Daniels, they may have faced each other dozens of times in the past in wrestling matches. But this last man standing match, it is a match that they will never forget. That anybody watching tonight here at home on pay-per-view, you will never forget it. We're going to remember this one forever. Let's take a look at what we saw tonight, Mike. Incredible. Off the ramp, through a table. Stop splash. Wow. Talk about a career shortening match. Neither man comes out of something like this unscathed, but AJ Styles tonight here at Destination X. In a bloody mess, has emerged victorious in the last man standing match. Wow, what a victory for AJ Styles. And what a match at Destination X. comes to AJ, when it comes to his matches with Daniels, I guess I've called every one of them. Never seen anything between these two men in terms of physicality like we just witnessed. And we saw from the get-go, obviously when we heard that this was going to be a last man standing match, we knew it was going to be a fight. Uh, we knew it was going to be violent, maybe even bloody, but obviously AJ Styles and, and Daniels still barely getting up. Uh, we can see right down in front of us uh, a bloody mess. Uh, as we said before, neither man comes out of this match unscathed. But AJ Styles came out of Destination X a winner tonight. Unbelievable. You know, throughout tonight's Destination X pay-per-view, we invited you to voice your opinion when it comes to our World Heavyweight Championship match. Bobby Roode defending against Austin Aries, and I think you've got some information for us, JB. We certainly do, Mike. We have had a poll up our Twitter, at Impact Wrestling all night. And we have some great, great tweets coming in. Roe McManus, the, the David Letterman of Australia, tweeting in. He feels tonight the it factor will have the victory, the advantage. How about our newest gut check competitor, newest addition to the knockouts, Taylor Hendricks picking one. And of course, Joseph Park chiming in from the Windy City of Chicago, picking Austin Aries, his opponent, Bully Ray, this Thursday night live on Impact, predicting it's going to be his friend, Bobby Roode. So a lot, a lot of feedback, a lot of people chiming in, and it's really from the get-go been a, uh, a variety of different opinions, and we're hearing them from all over the world. We're watching your Twitter, at Impact Wrestling. We want to know what you think going into this match, and I think we're ready to find out. What Time the, for the results, right? The results of this poll. Uh, who will win tonight's main event at Destination X? And so far, wow. Our online wow. audience, 71% are saying Austin Aries leaves tonight the new world heavyweight champion. And what a year. Obviously, I remember sitting here just a year ago when he won that contract. And now fast forward to Destination X 2012, and here he is going for that world heavyweight championship. What a year. And, and not to mention the fact what kind of momentum Bobby Roode has after becoming the longest reigning World Heavyweight Champion in TNA history tonight, Bobby Roode versus Austin Aries. Those of you who have voted, obviously anticipating that we will have a new World Heavyweight Champion in Austin Aries later tonight. We're going to send it back to our broadcast partner, Christy Hemi. Thanks, guys. Intense night. And still to come, two more championship matches. With me at this time, the man responsible for both of them, Austin Aries. Now, Austin, you chose option C. Here we are. What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? What are my thoughts? 
Well, you know, I'm very excited for the Ultimate X match that's coming up. I wish all those guys a lot of luck. But to be real honest, Christy, at this point, the X Division, the X Division's in my rear view mirror. And I'm gonna leave that behind me because I'm looking at what's in front of me. And what's in front of me is you, Bobby Roode. What's in front of me is the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. In a very short few moments, the time for talk is over. You've been calling yourself the it factor. You've been calling yourself the most dominant champion in TNA. And real soon, we're gonna find out if that's true. Because the way I see it, Bobby Roode, he's been winning his matches with beer bottles. He's been winning his matches with belt shots. Bobby Roode, I've been winning my matches with brain busters. And tonight, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Because I plan on giving everyone here in the Impact Zone, everyone watching at home on pay-per-view, including my mother, someone they can be proud of to be called a champion. Tonight, Bobby Roode, I will not walk out of this place empty-handed. No, you see, I'm gonna change the course, not only of Impact Wrestling, but of the complete and total professional wrestling industry. I will walk out of here the new World Heavyweight Champion and prove exactly why I am the greatest man that ever lived. Aries and Rude, it's still to come, but as Christy just said, you know what's on deck. It's Ultimate X. What do you say we go back? Let's review how the four men who advanced to Ultimate X, exactly how they got there earlier tonight. GE wow. taken. It, it's been quite a night, obviously, getting to this match. Kit Cash comes out against Mason Andrews after Mason got the victory earlier in the four-way, able to roll up Kit Cash and get the win, advancing to the Ultimate X tonight. Then we saw Doug Ooh, Williams, and what a match it was with Kenny King, able to get the victory over the British sensation, advancing to the match tonight. Then we saw Sanjay Dutt. What a win it was with the moonsault wow. stop, putting away his opponent. And then we saw in the final qualifying match tonight, it was Zima Ion earning an opportunity to compete next in the Ultimate X match after giving a, a stare to Jesse Sorensen. It was Zima Ion getting the pin, being victorious, thus setting up his opportunity, which awaits him next inside the Ultimate X. The following contest scheduled for one fall is the Ultimate X match. Introducing first from Big Bear, California, Mason Andrews. You know, it's interesting when you look at the four competitors in Ultimate X, none of the four men have ever held the X Division title. That tells us that not only will we have a new champion tonight, but we're gonna have a first time champion take down the championship belt that hangs high above the ring and become the champion. And his opponent from the Philippines, Well, Mason Andrews has never competed in Ultimate X. We recently saw Zima Ion in an Ultimate X match, June the 14th on Impact Wrestling. It was his first time in Ultimate X. That was the match where Austin Aries defeated Chris Saban and Zima Ion to retain the X Division title. This is Zima Ion's chance in his second Ultimate X to become X Division champ for the first time. And from Las Vegas, Nevada, Kenny King! Mike, so excited to see what these four bring to the Ultimate X. And Kenny King, no exception, comes to the ring so confident. And obviously knowing that this is a very different type of match. This is a, this is a match that you will see nowhere else in this professional wrestling industry than right here at Impact Wrestling, the Ultimate X, a TNA exclusive, and Kenny King stepping into it for the first time tonight. And from Mumbai, India, Sanjay Dutt! Great point, JB. Kenny King never competing in Ultimate X. In terms of overall experience, but most times among these four men in Ultimate X would go to Sanjay Dutt. 
And even though he's only competed twice in Ultimate X, and even though it was in 2004 and 2007, I have to look at that as putting Sanjay Dutt and Zima Ion at an advantage just because they have lived this. They understand the strategy that it takes because do not concentrate on pins or submissions. It's wear down your opposition to the chance where there's an opening. And Zima Ion using the hairspray, trying to distract the opposition and head to the corner and climb up. No success here, but having success with the elbows for all three, and then the three combined. Wow, triple drop kick. And Mike, interesting to note as well, you see no referees in the ring. No, no referee point. at any point tonight. It's going to be all about who can scale those high wires, get to the middle, and get the X. But there's so much danger involved once you go up the side of the steel structure, and then once you make your way across that cable. So many times you can just leave yourself wide open to have one of the other three opponents in this match take you down from such a high distance. Experience of Sanji as he tries to go to the corner. Cut off first by Kenny King. Ion slides in, tosses Kenny King out to the floor. Meanwhile, oh, out of nowhere, it's Mason Andrews with a drop kick for Zima Ion. And you always talk about how the high-flying X Division style really is great in this kind of matchup. But in this type of match, the Ultimate X, it comes down to a lot of times upper body strength. Your ability to go across the wires, maintain control, maintain composure, all while a lot of times you're hanging upside down. And I know you've talked to many competitors who have been in Ultimate X, and they will tell you the grip strength also so important because you've got to go hand over hand and make your way across the cable. And it's a surprising move here by Kenny King. The boy has worked to perfection. Stacks up two men, Ion and Andrews in the corner. And now, with the opposition taken out of play, Kenny King going to try and scale the structure to keep your eyes on Sanjay. And that's what strategy is in this match. You notice Kenny King went to the opposite side of the ring. He wanted to scale Great. that truss and get, point, get to the distance from, a, from the farthest distance possible from any of his opponents. And obviously we saw there Sanjay stop that. Look at this. Wow. Unpredictable kick by Kenny King. Gives him an opening. Look how quickly he's able to spring up. And how about the way that he sprung all the way to the middle of the cable? Sanjay has to make a desperation move, but the drop kick does it. Oh! The athletic ability of Kenny King is what impressed me so much there. Flying out of the corner. And by the time that he hit the cables, he was already halfway across to the championship belt. Sanjay able to quickly come back. That's where the advantage comes in when you have guys that can springboard from the top rope and have just perfect balance. Kenny King can do that. Actually, all four of these men we have seen can do that. And springboarding from the top rope to the wires is the quickest way to get there. And you're going to see that probably tonight as far as strategy goes. See my eye on the elbow turns Mason Andrews inside out. Ion jumps straight up. Boy, nice vertical that time. Yeah, from the second row. Did you see that? I did, and making up ground. Unfortunately, you get to that point where it's no man's land, and you have to deal with both Kenny King and Mason Andrews, who take Zima Ion and just pull him down with such force. And then the extension of the leg and the leg drop from Kenny King. One thing you have to remember, when you go for the X, when you actually try and scale the wires, if you don't make it, chances are you are in for a terrible landing, one way or another. And we just saw that with Zima Ion took him out, had a bad landing there, and obviously at that stage, you know, you gotta go for that, but you have to do it at the right point of the match. Well, I like Kenny King's strategy the first time. So tough to turn your back on anybody, even if you see that your opponents are, have been taken out on the floor. And Kenny King pays the price for turning his back. Let's take a look at that again. Sanjay Dutt standing moonsault, and look at that. Ooh, actually kind of hit the top, or the, uh, the lower rope there, if you saw that. He had so much momentum.
And I'm, I'm told here it's, it's out of our sight line, but Sanjay having to get medical attention. Yeah, he's being escorted from the ringside area. I don't know. Being taken back by. Trainer came down. It doesn't look good. We'll try to get word, but he, is, back. he has effectively been taken out of this match. All of a sudden, boy, things boil down to this. What was a four-way match, now a three-way with Sanjay out of the match, at least at this point. Kenny King, Zima Ion, Mason Andrews. What's an advantage for all three? If you think about it, twisting corkscrew move by Kenny King caught nothing but the arena floor. Boy, what a tough break for Sanjay Dutt. But we talk about the danger of this match. Look out, here comes Mason Andrews. And Mason hit that move on impact. Proved very effective for him, and he's just going with what he knows. He knows the experience is not, not in his corner, but he's going with what has ever worked to get him here. And that's a smart strategy, given the fact he's been through not only the four-way qualifier, but he got through Kid Cash as well. He has to be the most fatigued out of, out of any of these competitors tonight. And Mason Andrews is going to try and fight through that fatigue. Closing the gap, making his way across. Meanwhile, watch Kenny King. Speared him right off the high wire. And again, a springboard move from the outside. Again, another quick way to take your opponent off the ultimate X. Springboard across the ring and spear him right from the ropes. X Division Championship hangs in the balance. Right We're gonna crown. Wait. Sanjay coming back. Sanjay was taken out of the ring, out of the ringside area by medical officials. And I don't even know if his opponents know he's back. The importance of this match, evident in the fact that Sanjay Dutt coming back into play. And I think you're right, at least for the moment, they didn't see that Sanjay was sneaking his way back in. Well, they see him now. All right, here we go. It's Kenny King, Mason Andrews, both men meeting at the middle, both men meeting at the championship belt. Take down the title and become X Division champ. Oh, no. Oh, God. A neck breaker from the truss. And now look at the elevation of these two. 20 feet in the air. Are you kidding me? What's... Botsima Ion and Sanjay Dutt. High, high above the ring, on top of the steel structure. Any way that you can do it to make your way to the middle, no matter what it takes. First person to take down the title as Ion and Dutt meet at the, the, the middle of the formation of the, of the X. Oh. Never more dangerous than being put in this position as Sanjay and, and Ion exchanging up at the top of the structure. And now Sanjay. Sanjay drops down. Boy, he's got to be careful up there, too. Oh, and look at that. Look what Zima Ion has in his left hand. Zima Ion drops down under the cable and putting the hairspray right into the eyes, blinding Sanjay. And Sanjay falls all the way to the canvas. Opening is there no. for Zima Ion. You're kidding. Is he going to take on. down the belt? Title belt taken down, and we have a new X Division champion. Wow. Your winner and new X Division champion, Zima Ion. My God, a night where we saw the return of Jesse Sorensen. I, I can't believe it. Uh, I, I thought for sure, I thought for sure this was Sanjay's night. I thought this was the night after uh, how many years in this company, that X Division title eluded him, that this was his night to come back and win it all. No. Instead, Zima Ion from the top of the ultimate X structure is able to overcome all three of his opponents and emerged for the first time in his career as the X Division Champion of the World. Wow. Hand raised in 
victory. Zima Ion, the new X Division champion. Why, JB? Because Zima Ion said that he was going to do it by any means necessary. And that's exactly what he did tonight at Destination X. Let's take a look at how it went down. The Ultimate X match tonight here at Destination X. It's about scaling those wires, getting to the center, capturing possession of the X Division Championship. And tonight, we have a new champion. Look at that, triple drop kick early on in the match. Sanjay Dutt there, if you saw how he landed on his elbow, that's what took him out of action for a minute. But he was able to come back. And there we saw both men so close to the center of that X. So close to getting the X Division Championship win. Both men fall from the cables and Zima Ion standing on that structure, able to secure the win. Most importantly, able to secure that X Division Championship. Zima Ion leaves Destination X for the first time in his career as the X Division Champion. Let's hear now from Christy Hemi, who has some comments with the champion. Zima Ion, you are the brand new X Division Champion. How does it feel? Show some respect. Christy, I would like to dedicate this, first of all, to all of my haters and all of my critics for their undying support. But most of all, I want to dedicate this win tonight to my biggest inspiration, my guiding light, my driving force. Jesse Sorensen, without you, Transition. And without breaking your neck, I may never have realized Transition. my true potential. Transition. I may never have realized just how Transition. dangerous Transition. I really am. Transition. And Christy, Transition. just when you thought I couldn't get any prettier, I win this. And I am now the prettiest X Division champion of all time. Mike and Dad's back to you. Well, it's Mike and JB, Christy, but nonetheless sickening to see this. When these individuals went through so much tonight, from that last chance qualifier all the way through the tournament, and to see him take that shortcut, Zima Ion, zero respect from anyone involved tonight at Destination X. Well, the shortcut wasn't enough. How about dedicating the win to Jesse Sorensen? Are you kidding me? After the year that we've seen of this man compete, in the X Division with, with zero remorse over what happened at Against All Odds to now go on at the signature pay-per-view of the X Division and win. JB, guess, let's, uh, yeah. let's shift gears, let's change the subject, let's concentrate on what's still to come. It's our World Heavyweight Championship Showdown. It's Bobby Roode to defend the title against the challenge of Austin Aries, and it's up next tonight at Destination X. Less than a year's time, I went from a guy who was fighting for a contract to the most dominant champion in TNA Impact Wrestling. Combination of quickness and explosiveness on the part of Aries. They gave me an inch, I took a yard. They gave me a yard, I took a mile. Whatever they put on Austin Aries' tee, I knocked out of the park. I dare you to find anything that physical in the pro wrestling business. You're not finding it, my friend. I'm not satisfied with this. And I'm not satisfied with things moving at a snail's pace. I'll book the match with you against the world champion if you'll do one thing, give up the X Division title. I busted my tail for this. And you want me to just hand it over? And the X Division title is what put TNA on the map. It's the whole reason TNA was able to sit there and have a 10 year anniversary. You win the main event at Destination X, you become the world's heavyweight champion. You lose the match, and you walk away with nothing. You, my friend, just made the biggest mistake of your life. My whole life, I've surprised people. Nobody thought I could get the job done. When everyone thought this is going to be the test, he's not going to pass, I aced it. That title, that little paper championship that you wear, I don't plan on letting this opportunity slip away. 
I don't plan on letting this opportunity get away from me. I am no X Division wrestler. I am God's gift to professional wrestling. I have defeated every single top superstar that I've been in the ring with over the last seven months plus. Is there anything else left to say? I You're not gonna be able to out wrestle me. If you think you can, go back and watch the last year I've been here. You're not gonna outfight me. If you think you can, go watch the Border Ray match. You're not gonna be more physical than me. If you think you can, go watch the Samoa Joe match. If you think you're gonna outcheat me, well, guess what? It ain't gonna happen. Because I will do anything, anything to be the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Austin Aries battles the it factor of professional wrestling Bobby Roode for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Here we go. Time for our Destination X main event. World Heavyweight Championship showdown. Let's break it down and let's start with a tail of the tape. And as we compare numbers in the tail of the tape, not only does Roode have an edge and experience, check out the size advantage for the defending champ on the challenger, both in terms of height and weight. Will he exploit that? Here's the bullet points. And it starts off with both Roode and Aries record setters. Both hold the mark. Longest reigning champions in their respective divisions. General Manager Hulk Hogan, he gave Austin Aries the opportunity to challenge for the world title. But under just one condition, Aries had to relinquish his X Division Championship. A double. Not only agreed to give up his title, but to add prestige to the X Division that he respects, he offered up option C to Hulk Hogan. Every year at Destination X, the champ has the chance to challenge for the world title because Aries wants to permanently leave his mark on the division. Well, it's all or nothing for Austin Aries. Former X Division champ decided to gamble. He rolled the dice. He agrees to give up the title in exchange for the shot at Bobby Roode. And boy, I just have to love the confidence of the individual that, yeah, refers to himself as the greatest man who ever lived. Incredible strides Aries has made since earning a contract one year ago at Destination X 2011. question exactly how Bobby Roode has held on to the World Heavyweight Championship. But you can't deny the numbers. Since defeating James Storm last year, Bobby Roode has never let loose on the championship grip. A record-setting reign that's now exceeded eight months. Bobby Roode will really silence all the doubters. Tonight, he faces that man who's a unique challenge. It's his first title defense against Austin Aries. And Rude, so outspoken against both Aries in particular and against the X Division in general. But now, talking's over. Time to see if Bobby Rude can continue his streak or will we crown a new World Heavyweight Champion tonight. Destination X main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Brian Hebner. And 
And now, live from Universal Studios Orlando, it's your main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my right, he weighed in this morning at 211 pounds and comes to us from Tampa, Florida. He is the former undefeated X Division champion and the current number one contender for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. He is Austin Aries. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing standing in the corner to my left. He weighed in this morning at 228 pounds and comes to us from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He is the current reigning and defending TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Bobby Roode. You know, it's almost unheard of to advance as quickly as Austin Aries has to a main event pay-per-view slot in a world title match. What an accomplishment for Aries, who in pre-match interviews called this the biggest match of his career. We know Austin Aries is not going to be intimidated by any size advantage that the world heavyweight champion has. Aries never backs down to anyone. It's one thing, however, to make your way in that year's time to the world title shot as a challenger. It's another to become world heavyweight champion. Let's see if Austin Aries can complete the task right now at Destination X. Here we go. Mike, while Bobby Roode was coming to the ring, I just had a moment with Austin Aries just, just a second. I said, how you feeling? He goes, I'm so ready. You have no I do. Uh, and he said that with, with no doubt, no lack of confidence, and he goes into this match knowing it's the biggest of his career, no question. But he also goes into this with a boatload of confidence. He knows what he can do in the ring. He knows what it's taken to get him here tonight in this position. And he knows what it's going to take to beat Bobby Roode. JB, we talked about the size advantage that Rude has. At the same time, let's talk about the experience edge. Bobby Rude has been in more high profile, more high pressure championship matches than Austin Aries. This is Aries' first time in that main event slot challenging for the world title on a pay-per-view. And we know he's confident, but there has to be that that inherent, that built-in pressure that the challenger has to deliver. Mike, when we take TNA Live out on the road, I have the, uh, I don't know, privilege or honor or duty, I guess is probably how I look at it, of, of watching over the World Heavyweight Champion. I travel with Bobby Roode on, a, on almost a weekly basis. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you we're friends, but I'll also tell you it's, it's interesting to get to work with a guy who is so disciplined. It is routine. And certainly when you take a look at his lifestyle as World Heavyweight Champion, he has transitioned himself from one of the best tag team wrestlers in the world to one of the best in the world, period. And he's done that with discipline. He's done that with a strategy. He has done that by getting up every morning, no matter how he feels, and going to the gym for two hours, maintaining a strict diet like none other I've ever seen in professional wrestling. He has what he knows works for him down to a T, and he's not stopping. Especially knowing that what he has done has worked so well since becoming World Heavyweight Champion. And obviously, up and down the roads, he maintains an incredible schedule. But what he has to do now... Watch the side roll here as Aries goes for the first cover and gets two. So he needs to maintain what he has done because it's worked. And obviously, both men have had an incredible year since our last Destination X. In a year's time, look at these two and how their careers have changed, and, and certainly for the better. And they have both been on a momentum course to lead them right here tonight to this main event. The way that Aries had the cross face and quickly floats over, and now the champ trying to get inside the head of the challenger. That's all that that's about, those slaps to the head, slaps to the face, trying to get into the skin of Aries. 
You talked about the similarities that these men have in terms of training schedules, the commitment that they have to our business, and it's evident. Just take a look at both champion and challenger. But boy, there's some big differences as well. Well, both in, in the fact that these guys spend a lot of time on conditioning and cardio and training, and, and obviously <laughs> a regimented system that works for them. But I'll tell you what, on the other side of things, the big difference, something like we see with uh, just their diet. Bobby Roode will go to a, a restaurant and order the biggest steak he can. Whereas Austin Aries, ooh, doesn't eat meat. Says, I won't eat anything with a face. He's a vegetarian. <laughs> and he'll order a big portobello mushroom. Challenger Airborne drops the elbow into the cover, but Rude kicks out. Quickly, the side headlock by Aries is answered as Rude is able to shove Aries off into the side head scissors. And again, the conditioning, JB, that you talked about, the commitment these men have, I think it's going to be very evident as this match progresses. And the longer that it goes, and the more that the pressure mounts, you'll see the ability to be able to fight through that fatigue as Aries now with the headstand escape quickly up, and then the drop kick into the face. A fine example of how Bobby Roode hasn't faced an opponent like Austin Aries for this World Heavyweight Championship before. He's been in the ring with the best, he's beaten the best, no question about it. But something like that, and maybe something like Watch this. this. Double sledge. You're right, I talked about what a unique challenge it was for Roode to have to face someone like Aries. And while we, we showed the numbers for advantage Roode at the same time, Aries can come up with, with moves that, that Rude hasn't seen before. Challenger rolls the champ back in. Aries again mounts the top. Got him in his sights. Here goes Austin. Missile drop kick missed. And the opening is there for Rude to follow up and turn it in his favor. Champ using the boots and now with the throat, the windpipe of Aries across that bottom steel cable. Rude putting his weight right on the back of Aries' head. About a month ago. Bobby Roode invaded the United Kingdom and he held a press conference under Big Ben where he complained about everything that whole trip, but once he got there in front of the crowd, he loved the fact that he could gloat that he was the longest reigning champion in this company's history. He had a time down to the hour, literally, of when this record Cover would be set. the knee drop. Champ gets the quick count on Aries. And obviously since that time, he has really looked at every opponent as a threat. He doesn't take anyone like Difference in styles between champion and challenger evident to those of you who have watched Rude and Aries compete. I think Rude trying to, to keep Aries from, from really being able to get going, get the offense turned up. That's what we're seeing right now from Bobby Rude. Keep Austin Aries grounded. Don't give Aries that opening to go high risk and catch you with a move that Aries is going to be able to use. At the same time, we've also seen how productive Aries has been using a move like the Brain Buster. He's got submission holds as well. The last chancery, he just so well rounded a competitor. But right now, Chip feels like he's in the driver's seat with the knee drop. Not successful for Rude. It's been so interesting to watch the feedback coming in. Twitter, Facebook, everybody chiming in on the main event tonight. Vast amount of opinions. Oh, there we go. Almost tried to get, this is actually a, didn't quite get it how he had hooked, but he had obviously looked at a situation where he could get that submission maneuver in there, and Bobby Roode quickly makes it to the ropes. Evident that Bobby Roode has scouted Aries, aware of the various styles, the various moves, and that time it was Rude making it to the ropes before Aries could really cinch on the submission.
Aries using the top ring rope to try and break the eyes of Root, who sent out to the to the apron and then dropped down to the floor. How quick was Aries? Root's down, Root's on the floor, Aries gonna fly, go suicide dive, and he got sidestep. Nothing but guardrail on the way down. That's called scouting your opponent. And Bobby Roode did just that. He has seen Aries use that maneuver before. And look at this. Never before have we seen somebody get out of the way of that. That is Bobby Roode. That's why he's a champion. Tough to fault Aries for going with a move like that. But maybe he hadn't sufficiently worn down Roode. And now a confident champ is able to roll the weakened challenger back in. Stalking out of the corner. Here he comes. Full impact behind the blow. Follow cover with the leg hook for two. Couldn't have two more confident individuals from someone who brags about being the it factor, the greatest man who ever lived, and the it factor's rude with the front suplex and another pin attempt. I'll tell you what, it's been incredible to see the fan support for Austin Aries, especially going into this World Heavyweight title match. But while the fans have embraced him, he certainly really doesn't embrace the fans in the traditional way. He does his own thing. Not going to kiss up to him, is he? Certainly not. Uh, and what we've seen from him is obviously just a focused ambition, and that is to win this match tonight. And obviously what we've seen over the last year since winning the contract to even compete in this organization is nonstop focus. He set the goal a year ago, and here he is. We've seen how our general manager, Hulk Hogan, such a fan of Austin Aries, watching him deliver match after match, week after week, and month after month, to the point where Hogan gave him the opening for the title shot. But as Aries comes flying off the ropes, it's Rude who takes the knee, drives it right into the midsection. Power, weight advantage, size advantage of Rude comes into play as he rushes Aries straight into the corner. Tremendous impact. As Aries is sent back first, directly into the turnbuckle. into the head of Aries. Rude telling him, you're not in my league. It's something we've heard repeatedly from Rude for the past several weeks, ever since finding out that Aries was gonna challenge for the title, the disdain that Rude has for both Aries and the X Division. Champ sets him straight down. Rude covers, Aries kicks out. And as we saw earlier tonight, Mike, not only with Austin Aries here in this match, but with the three previous entrants into the Ultimate X match, he really does have no respect for what the incredible athletes of the X Division have accomplished. No respect for the fact that he's even in the ring with Austin Aries tonight. And the fact that Austin Aries had to give up his X Division championship to get here tonight. But how about the precedent he has set for those in the future? The very fact that the world champion will be defending his world championship against the reigning X Division champion here at Destination X, and I think that's fantastic for those competing in the X Division. Because of the respect that Aries has for the X Division. What he wants the X Division to be in TNA. The legacy that Aries wants to have in terms of the X Division, as well as going forward with the future champions. Even though we may not be happy with Zima Ion, being the current champ is now. It's Aries with elbows to the side of the head, able to break the grip. Sidewall taking him over quickly, and no, Rude kicks out. Oh my. Powerful clothesline, Rude on top, just two. 
And that connected squarely in the face. There he's a little, to be a little abrasion above the nose from that connection. Almost as if this match progresses with every minute. You have to wonder in the mind of Rude, he won't admit it publicly, but you would presume that the respect level internally, it grows. He can sit there all he wants and say you're not in my league. Try and paint brush him, try and pie face him. And you can see that in the eyes of of Austin Aries, all that's done is ignite a fire. Yeah, it's gonna fuel Austin Aries to the boiling point. A pair of forearms. Answered by Rude as the strikes are exchanged. Oof. Wow. And look at these two back and forth. Importance of this match so evident with the world title at stake. Close line misses. Oh, discus forearm shot. Extra power behind the blow from the challenger. The look of the eyes of Aries, like a man possessed, charges in quickly, lands in the apron, outside in shoulder block. Full power behind the clothesline. This time he flies. This time he quickly follows up on the advantage. And this time it's Aries who nails Rude with the suicide dive. Champ not able to get out of the way then. And what separates Aries from everyone else is the momentum he gets coming in to that move. Goes back into the ropes and at full speed goes plows right into his opponent, hits the drop kick. Rude turns around and caught with the missile drop kick. Now it's Aries who has Rude in his sights. Kane added in the corner. Might have been going for that big corner drop kick. Instead, running power slam, and Rude gets a near fall. Well, he sure was going for that running drop kick. And again, how good has Rude scouted Austin Aries? Knew that was coming in, had the presence of mind to pick him up, turn it into a slam, and take back the advantage in this World Heavyweight title matchup. Boy, it's a good point because that's, as you said, not the first time where, where Rude has seen Aries come at him with a move and had the perfect answer, the perfect counter. Again, it's Rude, sights set on Aries who turns around and, ooh, oh, how about this? Last chancery, there he is. Bobby Rude, you want to talk about scouting your opponent? Oh, I thought he was going to tap right there. Rude put his hand up into the air. Going to roll out of the last chancery into a front face lock. Knees to the top of the head, but Bobby Rude, the champ, turns it around, and now submission hold applied, not only seizing the arm, but at the same time cranking back on the head and the neck of the challenger. And again, notice where they're at. It's Aries able to slide out because he's in mid-ring. And then he rolls through with the submission. Last chancery again, and Rude's got his hand up. Could be close to having a new champion here if Rude taps. Instead, Champ takes the low road, breaking the eyes of Aries. He had the presence of mind to just reach down Felt the face, felt the eyes, and was able to break the hold by raking the eyes, and now has Aries in the corner. Big time shoulder block, now positions. A double up top. Watch out, watch out. Holding up into the air. I think Aries may have caught him with the knee and the head. Boy, he Stop, sure stopped did. the superplex attempt. What a great counter now. Look at this. Aries from the top. Rings the ears of Rude. Champs down. Challenger set. Here he comes. Went for the 450 roll through. Instead, it's the big double R spine buster. Rude on top. No. Not enough. Spinebuster has given Bobby Roode so many wins. 
and so has a submission hold. Instead, the shoulders of Rude down as Aries quickly turned it around. Ooh, Rude with the hammerlock and a defenseless Aries sent shoulder first into the corner steal. No way for Aries to stop the momentum as he went with the shoulder straight in and the perfect move by Rude to set it up. Because the arm sees the cross face is applied right in the middle of the ring. And now Aries has to fight through the pain of a submission. We saw it earlier with the last chancery. And now the Rude cross face. Rude able, able to maintain the maneuver as Aries tries to roll through and get out, not trying it again, and still, Rude hangs on, and now in a better position than ever. Almost as if the size here of Rude is, is finally being exploited, because while Aries tries to roll through and, and, and stop the pressure of the cross face, Rude has been able to put all of his weight across the back of Aries and maintain the hold. Ring ropes are a long ways away for Aries, who's fighting with everything to try and make his way to get the break as Rude grips even tighter. Did he, is he gonna break the plane here? Is he gonna touch the rope and get a break? Oh, he is so close, that's it. it. Wow. And you know that Rude right there is gonna use that five count all the way to four and a half before he gives up on the grip. If Rude has you locked in that cross face, I've talked to people who've been in it before, it's just a feeling of helplessness. You can't go anywhere. Obviously, Aries able to have the presence of mind to make it all the way to the ropes, knowing really the only chance he had to break that move is by getting to the ropes. And now, Rude grabs the World Heavyweight title. Man who has been notorious for his shortcuts in his record-setting reign Looks like he's going to try and introduce the World Heavyweight title belt as a weapon, but cut off by referee Brian Hebner. And with Hebner's back turned, Rude hits Aries, low blow, covers him, no! Aries able to kick out before three. And we have seen shortcut after shortcut from the World Heavyweight Champion. Especially during the early, early months of his reign. And now tries it again, goes back to his playbook. Delivering a low blow to Aries that he has not yet recovered from. Oh! Full speed drop kick, put a drop kick, gonna try and go Brain Buster. Champ up! Rude able to float over, and then Rude takes Aries and shoves him with the full force. Heads collide, Aries and referee Hebner. And now the champ has got his weapon. Aries trying to revive the referee, has no idea that he's about to get hit right in the head, right in the face with the title belt. Aries laid out, shouldn't end this way. Cover, pin. Here's two, Hebner counts two. Come on, Aries, and Aries does escape before three. He did get the shoulder up. Just in the nick of time, Aries hangs on. Now does he have the presence of mind to get to his feet, to come back? Crowd roaring. Chanting the name of the challenger. Elbow pads come off. Suplex attempt instead. Go through. Cover. Pin. No, oh, just two. Just that close to a new champ in Aries. This time Aries sidesteps. Oh, punted the head of Rude. Set him up. Get him, Brain Buster. Champ up. Straight down. Brain Buster. Here's the cover. Here we go. Here's two. He did it! Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match and new heavyweight champion of the world, Austin Aries! What a
moment. He did it. What a victory for not only Austin Aries, for the X Division, for Impact Wrestling, for his mother who says, now we can have a champion we can be proud of. They stand as one at the Impact Zone to pay tribute on a night when the X Division was in the spotlight. It's the man who relinquished his X Division Championship, Austin Aries, to become World Heavyweight Champion. What a reaction and what a response to the Aries victory. Oh, I cannot wait, JB, to go through this video package. Take it. Rude really sensing the frustration, and there, the running drop kick from Aries. However, Brian Hebner, the referee, knocked out. Rude takes advantage, as we've seen from so many times. Those shortcuts that almost became a signature of, of Rude in these world title matches. Now the brain buster and the pin. Here we go. Two and a new world heavyweight champion crown tonight at Destination X. What a match. What a show. What a champion in Austin Aries. Celebration time in Orlando, Florida. It's party time at the Impact Zone in response to the incredible win for A-Double. What a spectacle Destination X was tonight. When the history books are written, Destination X 2012, it'll always be remembered for Austin Aries becoming World Heavyweight Champion.